morning, church. Good morning, brothers and sisters in the Lord and friends also. You know, when I watch most younger, they just say, there's a saying that says, um, our battles is, or God is big, but our battles are small to God. And as just a song this morning, I can reflect on that saying, you know, because it was a powerful song. Amen. And I'm also happy to see a young man serving the Lord. Amen. So, yeah, it's a blessing. It's a blessing to be preaching from the source of life. Amen. God's word. Let us pray before going further. Father, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your grace. Lord, I thank you for life. And Lord, I thank you for bringing your breath into my body. And because of that, I am a living soul here this morning. Yes. And it's because breath has not left my body, Lord. It means that you are not over with me yet. So Lord, I thank you for that. And I thank you for the people here present this morning. I thank you for my brothers and sisters in the Lord. And I thank you for friends also. But Lord, I pray this morning that anyone that does not know you today as a personal Lord and Savior, will turn to you and cry out for mercy in repentance. Father, I thank you again just for your faithfulness, and I thank you again just for choosing to use me, a frail man. But Lord, I pray for clarity in thoughts, and I pray for wisdom in applying your word and delivering it. Father, I pray for your will to be done in a mighty way this morning, this afternoon rather. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You know, life is full of uncertainty. And many of us can be fearful not knowing what lies ahead of us during this 2020 era. Many of us might be anxious about bills or about coming debts that we don't know about or illnesses. Or perhaps just not knowing every detail of this year. We are limited creatures, but if you are a Christian here this morning, we can be at peace knowing we don't, we don't serve a God that is bound by time or space. We serve an almighty God, he's omniscient, which means he's all-knowing, he's omnipotent, which means all-powerful, and he's also omnipresent, which means he's everywhere present. And that says to me that we serve a God that is not bound by time, space, nor matter. And because of that, we can live. Because of that, we, we can live with the confidence to face tomorrow and the future. So brothers and sisters and friends here this morning, this morning I want to talk to you on the subject, facing this year God's way. Facing this year God's way. This morning I want to share four points or tips that will help us to face this year with Godfidence. Notice I say Godfidence, not confidence. Godfidence. Knowing, knowing our Heavenly Father is in control. Yes. I want us to turn to Luke chapter 22. A powerful account where, where I, I, these four points come out to me. Luke chapter 22 verses 39 to 46. Forgive me, Ali. Right. Sorry, I don't want to turn off the light. Do you want to do it? No, I can't do that. I can't do it. I can't do it. Luke chapter 22, verses 39 to 46. I want us to read, read through it together. You want the light? No, no, no. I don't want it. Verse 39 says, together, please. Verse 39 says, And he came out and went as he was wont to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples also followed him. And when he was at the place, he said unto them, Pray that he enter not into temptation. And he was, he was withdrawn from them about a stone cast, and kneeled down and prayed, saying, Father, if thou be willing, 
remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was as great drops of blood falling down to the ground. Verse 45 says, And when he arose up from prayer and come to his disciples, he found them sleeping for sorrow, and said unto them, Why sleep he? Arise and pray, lest he enter into temptation. Again, it's the title of my sermon here is Facing This Year God's Way. And my first point, and by the way, I should remind you of this account. This is account when Christ was about to face the cross. So my first point is the need for prayer. And in verse 39 we see where Christ says, He says, And he came out and went, as he was, as he was which means accustomed, to the Mount of Olives. And his disciples also followed him. I want us to understand that in order for us to accomplish God's will for this year, and also to know God's will, it will take prayer and some time away with God. A time of solitude. You see, time spent with God is never wasted. The word what in verse 39 means a custom, which means it was a regular thing for Jesus to go away by himself to spend time in prayer with God the Father while he was here on earth. Jesus being our example, our chief example, because he was the only perfect man to ever walk this earth. While we can look to man in the Bible, like David, Joshua, and all of those men in the Bible, for example, notice these men were, were imperfect men. Because we can see in their lives, in the Bible, where they have made mistakes. But the only perfect example we can truly follow is Jesus Christ. Yes. Amen. He was our chief example. And, 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 and hence, in, verse, in Mark chapter 1, verse 35, it says, And in the morning, rising up, a great while before day, he went out and departed in, into a solitary place and there prayed. And that's a different passage. But here Jesus is showing us the importance of prayer. He started his early ministry with prayer every single day, believe it or not. And he was God. You know, that says to me that Christ being our chief example, though he was God, he take the time out before every day to go away and spend time with God in prayer. And if we are going to face the new year, or this year rather, God's way, it will take some time of serious prayer. And I want us to look into John, Daniel chapter 6, verse 10. These are, these are those supporting points before I go back to the main passage. Daniel chapter 6, verse 10. It says, now when Daniel knew that, okay, I can look at this here, okay. Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house, and his windows being opened in his chambers towards Jerusalem, he kneeled down upon his knees, knelt down rather, upon his knees, three times a day, and prayed, gave thanks before his God, as he did a fourth time. You know, Daniel did not pray because he just wanted to pray. I believe it would have cost him. And I want us to understand this. Prayer must be sacrificial. Amen. It must be sacrificial. Amen. It must cost him something. He prayed three times a day. And as I read this passage, the thought came to me. Would I consider myself a person of prayer? Or would you this morning consider yourself a person of prayer? Daniel prayed three times a day. It doesn't mean we have to pray three times a day. But I ask the question, would you consider yourself a person of prayer? If you are not, probably you think you can face this year without God's help. Because prayer is there to, for us to seek God for help. And for us to face this new year, it will cost us some serious time in prayer. And if you are a Christian that doesn't pray, it means that you are acting out of pride to say that, God, I can handle this here by myself. And prayer means that we want God's help. And Daniel, being a man of God, though imperfect, 
He prayed three times a day. Why? Because he needs God's help in his life. Brothers and sisters and friends, Christ could not face the cross without prayer or without God's help. So how can we face this year or weeks without prayer? I want us to look at another passage, Acts chapter 12, verses 1 to to verse 11. And these other passages that surround about prayer. I just want us to understand that the my first point was the need for prayer. Acts chapter 12, verses 1 to 11. Now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex the church. Which means, the word vex in that passage means arras. Arras was really giving the church a warm time back in his time. He was killing a lot of people in the church. He was killing, as you see in verse 2, he says... And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. So he was just going about and persecuting the whole church. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. Unleavened bread, sorry. And when he had apprehended him, which means Peter, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quarter Nil, Nilsen, rather, of soldiers to keep him. Intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Verse 5 says, Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Amen. Verse 6 says, And when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with chains, and the keepers before the doors kept the prison. I want you to understand that the keepers before the door kept the prison. These are men compared to the God that we serve. And verse 7 says, And behold, the angel of the Lord came unto him, and a light shined, into, shined in the prison. And he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, These are the angels speaking, Arise up quickly. And his chains fell off from his hands. And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself and bind bind and thy sandals and so did he and he said unto him cast thy garment about thee and follow me and he went out and followed him and whilst not it was true which was done by the angel but though he saw a vision verse 10 says when they were past first and the second ward they came unto the iron gate that led unto the city which opened to them of his own accord and they went out and passed on through one street, and four with the angel departed from him. Verse 11 says, And when Peter was come to himself, he said, Now I know of a surety that the Lord had sent his angels and had delivered me out of the hands of Herod and from all the expectation of the, the, the people of the Jews. But I want us to pay keen attention to verse 5. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison. But prayer was made without ceasing of the church of God. You know, in Matthew chapter 18 and 20, it says, For where two or three are gathered to- together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. So when we gather together as a church to pray, God is in the midst of us. And, 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 that, and because of that fact, we can pray with such vibrance, knowing that God will answer our prayer according to His will. We don't, though Herod be, being a man here and heard, think he r- run things here and heard. God sent, sent his angels because the church was praying for Peter. And God sent his angels to free Peter. And that's the power of prayer right here. The church was praying without ceasing. You know, I want you to look again in Matthew chapter 16, verses 18 and 19. I just want to make a small point here. And I go back to the text. Matthew chapter 16. And I say and also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Verse 19. And, and verse 19 says, I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. 
And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth, thou shalt be bound in heaven. And whatsoever shall, shall loose on earth, shall be loose in heaven. So in other words, Christ give us as a church the power of God to operate here on earth. So which means no government, no man, no criminal can stop the church when we come together to pray. No amount of criminal in society can stop God when we come together as a church of God to pray. Knowing that verse 5 in that passage of Acts, the church was praying without ceasing. Yes. And God sent this heavenly beings to, 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 to rescue Peter from prison and deliver him. Hallelujah. And that's the power of prayer. Amen. And that's why as believers we shouldn't be afraid to pray. Because God will answer our prayer according to his will. And God will always fight in his church we are. Don't be afraid of criminals. Pray for him. But no man can stop God's work here on earth. Because in verse 8, not the same passage, it says, And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Nothing at all, not even Satan can prevail against the church. May we pray. And that's the power of the church. Prayer with such power. Prayer with zeal. Let's go back to the text. In verse 40. And when he was at the place, he said unto them, Pray that he enter not into temptation. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone cast, and kneeled down and prayed. I believe that Christ, <coughs> I believe that Christ needed the physical support and the encouragement. That is why he challenged his disciples to pray. And if we consider ourselves followers of Christ, just like how Christ challenged his disciples back in his time to pray. God is challenging us here as believers here and earth to pray. You know, when I, when I think about the corruption in our country, if a church there today and pray about this corruption thing, this corruption thing can get rid of. Because we serve a, a mighty God. And sometimes we operate like we don't serve a mighty God. You know? We serve the all-powerful God. He also challenged them to pray because they needed the divine strength from God. Because of what was about to come. Knowing, as I said earlier, this was the account of Christ was, was going to face the cross. And it's the same for us. We need divine strength and help to face this year. We need God's help as the church. All of us need God's help. We need the divine strength to face this year. Because as I said earlier, Many of us, we are not sure of what tomorrow comes with. Illnesses will come. A lot of things will come and cause us unaware. But prayer is here. As a way we can communicate with God and ask God for help. And God is willing to act on our behalf. What is prayer? Prayer is conversation with God and it's that simple do you pray only when you feel like it I want us to understand that we can't accomplish God's will or even survive, survive this year without prayer anything that we will ever accomplish here on earth according to God's will this year or God's way it will be because of prayer I know as a church or as a Christian, we can't separate God's, God's work from prayer. God's work and prayer go hand in hand. I can't come here to preach this morning and don't spend time in prayer. Prayer is so much important. Listen to this. I want you to understand this. Prayer is not getting God ready to do your will. But rather, prayer is getting us ready to do God's will. I know I want us to understand that again. Prayer is not getting us ready to do God, um, getting, getting God ready to do our will. But prayer is getting us ready to do God's will. And that's a big difference. And Christ is going to show us that. Amen. We see where Christ was willing to put his own self aside in order to accomplish God's will. And, I, and this is an example, this is a firm example of what prayer should look like. In verse 42, it says, Christ here speaking. In verse 42, it says, Father, if thou be willing, 
remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And notice Christ wasn't asking God to take away this cup. He said, nevertheless, not my will, but thine will be done. And that's what prayer is all about. Being obedient. Amen. So my second point is the need for obedience. In verse 42 again he says, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. In verse 42, we see a practical example of obedience. Would you consider yourself obedient like that? Whenever it comes on to God, we must have a heart of obedience as God's children. Obedience comes with simple denying of oneself. Because I want to tell you this. This was God, this, this was Christ's will to accomplish. And I want us to understand this wasn't that easy task. And the same for us. Sometimes God is going to ask us to do some things that is not easy. But we need to have an obedient heart. I want to read verse 42 again. It says, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup. But it nevertheless change the subject. He says, nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. So in other words, God's will must always prevail over our own, our own, our own purpose. In, in Philippians chapter 2, verses 7 to 8, Pastor preach, your pastor preached from it about a week ago. Philippians chapter 2, verses 7 to 8. Philippians chapter 2. But made himself of no reputation and took upon himself, took upon him rather, the form of his servant and was made in the likeness of men. Verse 8. And being found in fashion as a man, as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even to the death of the cross. And Christ being our chief example, yeah. he was very obedient to God's will. And as I, I preach over the Christmas again, it is because of Christ's obedience while we are poor here. If Christ was like disobedience like most of us, we would have the hope that we have today. And we have to give God thanks for his obedience. Even though this was a huge challenge, Christ was willing to surrender to God the Father. We are to be obedient exactly like Christ. If you are not saved this morning, I want you to understand this. Christ went all the way to the cross for you. He endured such pain, suffering and agony just for you. Will you turn to him this morning? Christ was obedient. And that's a chief example. Perfect example. Back to the believers. If we believe that Christ is our chief model, then we must walk as how he walk and talk as how he talk. No matter how hard the task that God called us to, he expects us as his children to be obedient. And again, no matter how hard the task might be, God expects all of us to be obedient. And, and sometimes we can beat around the corner, but if God says you should do this today, ten years later, it's still you should do it. So it's, it's better that you be obedient to God's will. And I've learned that. John 8, verses 28 and 29, and this was a good example. Of Christ himself again. John 8 verses 20 and 29. Then said Jesus unto them. When he have lifted up the son of man. Then shall he know that I am he. And that I do nothing of myself. But as my father hath taught me. I speak these things. Verse 29 says. Which is very key. And he says. And he that sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone. Hear this part. 
For I, all, I do always those things that please him. Christ was very obedient. He said he do all the things that would please God the Father. Would you, would, would you be like that this year? Do things that would please God the Father. Please, please the Lord Jesus Christ. Again, are we obedient like Christ? Because he always aimed to please God. Which means he always aimed or make it a prayer to obey God while he was here on earth. We should always aim to please and obey God. You know, I want you to look with me to Deuteronomy 28. I know many of you might know this passage. Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy 28, verses 1 to 4. He says, And it come to pass, and it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, and to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee and I above all nations of the earth. Verse 2. And, and, and all these blessings shall come, come on thee, and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Blessed shall thou be in the city, and blessed shall thou be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruits of thy body, and the fruits of thy ground, and the fruits of thy cattle, and the increase of thy king, and the flocks of thy sheep. You know, if we want, that passage said to me as I was preparing, if we want God's favor, our blessing, and our life this year, we will have to be, we have to be obedient to Christ and God's will. We have to practice to be obedient if we want God's blessing upon our life. Amen. Sometimes we wonder why God is not blessing us. It's because we're not being obedient to His will. Because God's favor or His blessings only come with His will when we be obedient. I can't want God's blessings if I'm not wanting to live for Him. And there are many people today that are not saved, but they want God's will. They want God's blessing on their life. But God is a gracious God. Yes. And sometimes God still gives us things that we don't deserve. Yeah. But we, if, if you want God's will, if you want God's best, if I put it like that, if you want God's best, you have to learn to practice a life of obedience. Because God's best only comes with being obedient. Yeah. Practicing a life of obedience is always a great way to live. Obedience is key. You know, when I was going to school, I can't forget this. Forget this, rather. It's, it says, in school, education is key. But when we turn to when, I, when we turn a Christian, obedience should be key. And that's a, that's a, the, the, the good example. In in school, they say education is key. But when we turn a Christian, obedience should turn key. And I'm not saying education is not important. Brothers and sisters, obeying God is very important because we never know what blessing our obedience is tied to. I want to repeat that. Obeying God is very important because we never know what blessing our obedience is tied to. It's worth to trust and obey. We love to sing that song, Trust and Obey. And I want you to look in this, this Abram in Genesis 22, still on the point of obedience. Genesis 22, verses 15 to 18. And this was a blessing for the entire world just because Abraham obeyed God. And the angel of the Lord, and by the way, I want to explain the passage. I don't want to just run and start with verses. This was a passage where God challenged Abraham to sacrifice his son. So, and does this verse follow? Um, verse 15 says, And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of the heaven the second time. And said, By myself I have sworn, said the Lord, because thou hast done this thing, and, 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 and hast not withheld thy son, thy holy son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gates of his enemies. Verse 18. And it's verse 18, which is very important. And in, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. 
because thou hast obeyed my voice. Amen. And that is it. I said to you earlier, practicing a life of obedience is very important because we don't know what our obedience, what our, what our blessings are tied to rather. You know, sometimes I find out that when God says to me to do something, and I do it, I really walk the reward for yes. just obeying God. And Abraham did that, and because of Abraham's obedience, the blessing is talking about oh, oh, the, the, the Gentile nation and the Jews will be saved through Jesus Christ. And because of obe and Abraham's obedience, we can have that blessing today. I yes. you know when, when God just called me to, to, to study for ministry, and uh, many of you know that I was, uh, <laughs> I don't like saying this thing, but many of you know that before Christ, I was a bad boy before Christ. And, and I would have like, wasted all my time in school. Wasted all of my time. I used to have time to my school work, but I just wasted all of my time. You know, and I got saved, and God called me to me, you know. And when I, I checked that they needed five CXCs just to. First, also to, 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 to proceed the degree program, and in my logical reasoning, I, I said to myself, I'm going to get these six years before I start peer review. I know God said to me that no, I want to start September coming, which was September of 2017. And I started, and I'm telling you, because I obeyed God, <laughs> I when I'm, while I'm doing my studies. I do some sexes on the side and I get them. Yeah. And I'm telling you that it's very important to practice a life of obedience. Yes. Because if, if I did have stayed back, Amen. I would have been behind time and I wouldn't Amen. get the sexes. Yes. Because I obeyed God yes. and proceed, I get those sexes. Yes. And so I'm telling you to practice a life of obedience because you don't know what your blessing will be tied to. And today, I, I am, when I look back, I can say, God is very good, you know? Very good. Because when I think about it, I, I'm thinking about where I'm coming from. Yes. And because I obeyed God, yes. I got my CXCs and I'm, I'm currently in the process of, of finishing up my degree. Yes. Next year will be my final year. Yes. So I'm telling you, when you obey God, God always comes through with a reward. Yes. And yes. Christ being our example, chief example, yes. set that pace off. So let's practice being obedient this year. God is very good. You know, my, my, my third point is the need for encouragement. Verse 43 says, And there appeared an angel un, unto him from heaven, strengthening him. You know, Christ being God himself, while he was facing the cross, I think it was a very tough challenge for Christ himself. Very tough. That angels, that God the Father would have to send angels to strengthen him. And my third point is the need for encouragement. And I also want to ask this question. And I want you to think about it. Can anyone of you here survive life or this year? Or, or something I hear some, some people say to me that your work is very challenging. Can you survive continue working at your workplace or studying or whatever it is you're currently doing without encouragement? I know Christ couldn't face the cross without encouragement. So can you face this year without encouragement? Can you? Absolutely not. Because when, I, when I'm at school, there's time when I get very discouraged and I thank God that I have people that call me, text me, and just encourage me. Yes. Because all of us need each other. We all need encouragement. Yes. You know, verse 43 says, And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. And I want us to understand this. Nothing caught God unaware. God knows what we need because he knew what Christ need back then. So he therefore know what we need to carry out his will this year. I believe God the Father sent angels from heaven 
to provide the vital encouragement for Christ that he needed to face the cross. I want to, remember, I want to remind us rather that this was not an easy task. And, and, this is a, and there's a similar passage in Matthew, 20, Matthew 4 verse 11. 11. Matthew 4 verse 11. Bring it up then the devil leave it in and behold angels came and ministered unto him this was after Christ was tempted by the devil after the 40 days and, 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 and 40 night fast you remember that fasting and look again the same in, that was early on in, in the ministry of Jesus Christ he says behold angels came and ministered unto him which means to provide and necessary encouragement to carry on his ministry. Christ couldn't carry on his work without the angels coming to encourage him. We all need encouragement. We all need each other. The word minister there means to serve or to encourage. God knew Christ needed the help. Hence, that is why he sent angels to help him at a time like that. Do you know it's the same for us? God knows what we need and he will provide necessary encouragement our needs in order for us to accomplish his will throughout this year. And because of that, we, we can face this year now, not defeated. Because sometimes as Christians we live in such a defeated way. God doesn't want us to live defeated. You know, there are many times, you know, I have to thank the Lord for the body of Christ. Because for the necessary prayers, and oh yes, prayer is a, is a way of encouraging someone. Praying for someone, telling someone you're praying for them is a, is a good way of encouraging someone. I have to thank the Lord for the body of Christ, for the necessary prayer and encouragement I get. Because it helped me to do God's will with confidence. You know, you know just with this week, I, I, um, <laughs> it, it that came out about the, the learners would have been, Sunday would have been the last day. And so I said, oh, okay, I want to get this thing before it gets empty to, so that I can like, run up on all the place. Okay. So I went to the tax office, um, and I saw Sister Ruth, I was very tax office, um, as a <laughs> and she, she provided that necessary encouragement. Because when I went to the tax office and I saw the line, I was like, oh Lord, I'm not going to this place today. <laughs> And I saw Sister Ruth, and I got two minutes and ten minutes. <laughs> so I, I have to thank the Lord for the body of Christ, you know. I got you in less than ten minutes, man. That was really a blessing. <laughs> that was really a blessing. I consider that a level of encouragement. It's a blessing, man. You know, and, and all of us must ask for this daily. Would you consider yourself a person that is encouraging or a person that is discouraging? Ask yourself that because sometimes we can be very discouraging to one to another. God doesn't want that. God wants us to encourage each other. And a passage that we love to quote so much, Hebrews chapter 10, verses 24 to 25. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 24 to 25. It says, And let us consider one another to provoke and to love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of together, together rather, of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. You know, we love to quote verse 10, but I believe God wants us to understand verse 4 as well. Verse 4 says, Let us consider one another to provoke, which means to stir up, and to love and to good works. And that's a vital way to encourage someone. Sometimes we ask people that, like, how come I don't see a church today? How come I this? How come that? And we don't realize that the person might be going through something. We all need encouragement. Yes. We all need. That's very important, man. Encourage people. We need to be people that encourage one another. Encourage each other some more. Don't stop encouraging. 
Encourage your pastor, encourage your leadership. Encourage your prison worship team, encourage everyone. Encourage my brothers to play the piano. All of us need encouragement. Don't tear people down. Help people up. And it's that simple. God calls us to that. And my fourth and final point is the need to rely on God. Verse 44. Let's go back to the text. Verse 44. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly as his sweat was as it were great drops of blood falling down to the ground. And when he rose up from, the, from prayer and was come to his disciple, he found them sleeping for sorrow. And said unto them, Why sleep he? Rise and pray, lest he enter into temptation. You know, I want us to understand this. Sometimes we think that God's will is the easiest now. Sometimes, sometimes people think that, oh, you're doing God's work, means it's going to be easy. But I want to understand this this morning. Being in God's will sometimes looks like the further we go, the harder the battle gets. But we can be at ease knowing that God will be with us through it all. You know, a verse for me, you know, every year I try to ask God to just give me a verse that will help me to, to go through the year, you know. And, and last year, 2 Corinthians 3 verse 5 was a blessing to me and says, read up on the street, my brother, please. 2 Corinthians 3 verse 5. Alright, I've proceeded. I want to work with time. <laughs> it says, Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think, to think anything as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. I know that verse would have been a blessing to me. And that verse, as I, as I, as I, talk, as I speak here in my final point, which is the need to rely on God, we must understand that God is enough. Because I'm telling you, Life changes a lot. And, and there's a saying that says, people train so fast, just like the climbing. <laughs> and I'm telling you, we are we at a place in our life as Christians, we realize that God is enough. And that's what Paul is saying, you know. He says, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God, which means God is enough. Amen. And sometimes, sometimes we... In the, in the world today, you see where people is acting like they are self-sufficient. But here Paul is speaking on the contrary, he says it's sufficient to love God. Which means nobody on earth can sustain themselves. It doesn't matter how much money you have, anything that you have, in the possession. It is God that is sustaining you. And of course, as Christians, we can face this here. By understanding that we need to rely on God for every single thing. Amen. You know, as I say that, I, I can look back in my life and I realize, since I got saved, and says, everything that I once had, as, as a person, because believe it or not, every single thing here on earth belongs to the Creator. And if I am back to God, and everything that I have, I realize that it was God that provided. Yeah. And when you understand that it is God that provides your need, it is God that breathes love oxygen in your body, it is God that gives you everything that you have, it will push you to rely on Him. And this is very important. We can rely on Him for everything, and we can rely on Him to bring us through. Verse 45 says, Verse 45, bro, back to the passage. Please. And when he rose up from prayer and was come to his disciples, he found them sleeping for sorrow. 46. And said unto them, Why sleep ye? Rise and pray, lest he enter into temptation. You know, when Christ returned, 
he found the disciples sleeping. You know, when he needed, when he needed them the most, they were simply sleeping. They failed him. And sometimes we fail God as well. So don't bash them. But I want to say this to all of us this morning. And I want you to remember this as you go through this year. Even though we keep people close, keep God even closer. Because it's God alone that cannot fail us. It is God alone that is perfect. God alone can fail us. And I believe the disciples, as verse 45 says, he found them sleeping for sorrow. Because they, in their own human strength, couldn't follow Christ to Calvary. You know, I think all of us as human beings here this morning, probably of time where we are afraid of death. But when I, when I read this account, I see where Christ faced death with such confidence. But his disciples could have managed it. So hence, I believe it why they fell asleep. It was Christ's personal devotion to God the Father bring him to Calvary Cross. Not his strength or relying on his disciples. Because if Christ didn't have his personal relationship or personal commitment with God, he wouldn't have sustained to face the cross. And the same for us, there's things that is coming this year that all of us perhaps would have to face individually. And I want you to understand that the cross wasn't the disciples to face, but Christ himself. So they could go with him to a point but they couldn't go anymore. And it's all of us. We're going to face trials, we're going to face hard times. And of course, God has a blessing for us. But I want us to understand this. There will only be challenging times that come. And it will be because of your own personal relationship with God, whether you come to it victoriously or not. And, and hence, as I am saying, that we need to rely on God individually. You don't come to church and read the Bible only. Read the Bible at home. Pray at home. Pray where you go. Have a strong devotion with God Himself. You must have a strong relationship, strong fellowship. In your life, I want you to understand this people will come and go. And it can be very discouraging. But it will be only God that will stay with you forever. And sometimes people come in your life and they will leave. But on the flip side, there's people that in your life and they die and leave you. And it's up to you if you're going to carry on in life. Are you going to sit there discouraged for the rest of your life? And that's why I'm telling you that as we go through this year, we need to, to see life in a reality realm that life comes with so many things. And it's, it will be because of our personal relationship with God that carries us through. And I, and I, I want us to understand it's, it's, it's better to cling to God from now than to try to cling to Him to a hardship. People will always come and go. Don't blame them because it is just that they are imperfect. Or perhaps sometimes people can't understand certain things that they are seeing in our lives. Some people can't see, see, see us suffer. And the end, that's why some people distance themselves from us. But I want us to understand that even when people leave us, God will never leave us nor forsake us. Amen. Don't blame people because they are imperfect. But God who is perfect will stay with you and strengthen you right to it. You know that song that we love to sing, I have decided to follow Jesus. The line that says, Don't none, none go with me, still I will follow. Don't none go with me, still I will follow. And that, I'm saying this, just like Peter, that, that says, 
Lord, I will never deny you, I will never forsake you, I will never this, I will never that. But when the agony came, he just denied it. And I'm saying that we can say that though none go with you, Lord, so that we follow. It's easy to say that we are more. But when our times come, I'm telling you, it will be only because of a strong devotion and commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ that we are able to go through. And this is why I learned a long time ago not to, to open my mouth and say, yes, 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 I will do this, I will do that. Because life will show you that you're not ready to, 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 to honor your, your, your words. But as I close, I want us to understand this verse. I want to close with this verse. John 15, verse 5. As I close my final point, which is the need to rely on God. John 15, verse 5. Oh, just before I close. Alright, I will read. It says, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, I in him rather, the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me he can do nothing. He never said without people. He never said without your own self. He said without God himself, you can do nothing. So as I close, I want to say understand that. John 15 verse 5, bro. As, you, as I close, realize that if you operate life without God, it won't be before too long where you dried up to nothing. Because God should be our full source, our only source as human beings. And that's it. As I close, I want to encourage all of us to focus on Christ as a face this year. Don't side shock and he will see us through. Let us pray. Oh Father, we thank you for your goodness. And Lord, we thank you that you are a perfect God that we can follow. And Lord, I want to say thank you for using me to deliver your word once again. Humble my heart. Be with my brothers and sisters. Strengthen them. And them to see the importance of prayer. To practice a life of obedience. And to realize that they need encouragement also. So help them not to go far away from encouragement. Because your word says, I am sharp and high and Lord. Lord, I pray that as we, we, we go through this year, we will rely on you just like Christ did to face the cross. And Lord, I pray for anyone that doesn't know you this morning, this afternoon, Lord, as your personal Lord and Savior. As your personal Lord and Savior. Lord, I pray that you will repent. And call upon you in sincerity and in truth. Because Lord, life is temporal. And time is short. And time always goes against us as limited creatures. So Lord, I pray that you will repent and call upon you. Because Lord, your word says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So Lord, I pray that they call upon you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.